everyone welcome to my channel today we're going to do on a wooden cradle board some textured poppies I had drawn out the image and textured them in and then we're going to color and antique them I hope you enjoy I begin by drawing out my poppy uh, images and then with spackling paste I very carefully and I will have to say that spackling paste was a little bit wet worked on getting my images of my poppies to show up in the paste by pushing that palette knife up against the paste to form the petals.
portion of the video I'm going to do uh, live while I'm talking on camera. These are the new Vivid Intense. There are eight colors, actual colors. You've got your Diazazine Violet, Quinacridine Magenta. This is your Cobalt Teal, Hansa Yellow, Nickel as a Gold, Yellow Green, Fallow Green, Quinacridine Red, Ultramarine, and Pyro Orange, and a white and a black. And most people will say, okay, white and black. That's if you want to put white or black in something. But actually, if you add a little bit of white to a color, you're making a tint. And if you add a little bit of black to a color, you're making what's called a shade. Now, uh, I could do this on a paper plate, mix my colors on a paper plate. I could mix my colors on a paper plate and do the artist thing, put a couple drops of, let's say I want to do a dark red, which might be the quinacridine red or the quinacridine magenta. And in theory, I might put some black in. But another way to deepen a color is to add blue or violet. Now this ultramarine blue is too light, but a drop of that diazazine violets would behave almost like black. Now the tricky part is the drops that are going to come out of these bottle tops are a little inconsistent, okay? And since I make color for a living, I'm a little OCD about this. I've gone ahead and taken these little paint touch-up markers. Now I'm going to test colors in advance before I give you the recipes and then try to push in with a brush to fill up the colors once I've made a mix. But my point is I can get a more consistent drop of a color by using this little thing and squeezing a tiny bit out. It even has a cool little mixing bead in it. So just so I don't mess up my table. I'm going to put a few drops of the carbon black in here. And we're going to speed this up for you. We'll put a little music here while you see me fill this up. But I'm going to do a carbon black. I'm actually going to do a diazazine violet. And uh, I'm going to put some of the quinacridy magenta in here. So enjoy some music while I do the filling. And I'm probably going to use my larger bottle to fill these up. They're going to be a lot easier. I don't know if it's really easier, just faster. It will probably be faster. I don't know if it's any easier. Because I could just as easily get a, a few drops of the black in this thing, but for the timing of the video, it's easier to squirt a little bit of black in this with my bigger bottle. Gravity all on its own is going to pour out more at a time. And I don't need to fill it all up. I need just enough in there because when I use this paint tip, by the way, these little things have a handy little brush on one end. On the other end, of course, I got to be able to get this open on camera. It's got this little tip. You pull out the little needle that goes inside of that tip. And by the way, I ordered some uh, jeweler uh, bifocal glasses things because my, my eyes are not that great to get this tip back in. But this little guy will give us a more consistent drop. There we go. Okay, so I had to really push it a little bit to get it started. It's it's a flexible plastic, but it's, it's, it's a kind of combination between tiff, stiff and flexible. But I'm getting a much more consistent drop on the plate than what I might get with my top. Now I'll try really hard just to put one drop out, but because you're squeezing the whole bottle and it's coming off the edge, it's a lot more paint coming out, okay? So I like to use these little tips 
to be sure what I'm making. Okay, now I want to make a darker red. I'm working on some poppies. So I want to make a darker red. And I'm going to start with the Conocrity Magenta. Well, we'll find out. I think I actually put a drop of diazazine violet in there and then black here, which is going to give us an interesting way to look at these mixes. So I want a couple drops of my quinacridine. Sorry, I'm having trouble with my right hand. And uh, a drop of it over here. I just looked at my bottle and I think I used diazazine. So we're going to find that in a minute. And I did want to show you what they both look like. Because you can deepen stuff with black. That would be the natural thing to create a shade color. But you can also deep, deepen things, like I said, with a blue or a dark violet. Okay. Now I've got some paper swatches here. This is kind of a heavy medium watercolor stock. It's an, Actually, it's a mixed media stock, not watercolor. I've got my little water tub right here. And I'm just going to pick a bit of this up. And a bit of this up. Yep, that had the violet in it. Okay. And because it's violet on violet, it is going to make a deeper reddish purple, which was not what I was looking for for the poppy. I kind of want that deep red for a poppy, right? Now I can add more black, or shall I say more diazazine violet, and deepen this. And it'll give me a much darker color. A little bit of water in here so you can see the difference in those shades. This just has a, just a skosh on the end of my brush to deepen the magenta. And this has a little bit more on there to deepen it. And if I wanted to go one drop further, I think I'm going to wet my paper in the next one because that would have flow a bit better. That's even darker. Just by adding a little bit more of the diazazine violet, I'm getting three different shades of that magenta. And let's wet this paper here. Typically when you're working with watercolor paper, mixed media paper, you can get away with wetting it with water before you add your color if you're going to paint on that paper. Whether you're going to paint like a watercolor or if you just want to do a test. And this is what the regular quinacridine magenta is going to look like, right? So you can see this is a little bit more antiqued, a little bit more antiqued, and a whole lot antiqued. Okay, pretty color but a little bit too pink for my poppies. Now, since I've already got the Canocody Magenta and the Blackout, we might as well do a test. I am going to, with this paper, I kind of don't want the colors to run together though. That's the only thing when you're working with watercolors and you're wetting the whole area, the concept is getting it to them to flow into one another. But I just want this paper moist enough so that brush is going to flow that color on for you. Okay, so let's take a little bit of this quinacridine magenta and we're going to add some black. Wow! Look how strong that black is. And I didn't pick up hardly any. If I had put a whole drop in, I would have ruined it. If I had tried to mix it in this vial, without testing it first, I would have had no idea how dark it would make. So whether I'm doing it on the little vial and just the black that's left on my brush and I pick up more quinacridine magenta, that's interesting. That almost matches this one with the diazazine violet. Close, not exactly, but it's made with a black, right? And this is the original one where I only put a drop of black in. 
it's still way too purple for what I'm trying to accomplish. And I'm going to even take this and add more magenta to it. Just take some of that color that I lightened and then lightened again. Oh, that's a really pretty color. But again, too pink for my poppies. I'm doing red poppies, red and orange poppies. So it looks like I need to try a mix with the quidocritine red. Yes, I know it's a waste of paint, but sadly I get to waste the paint for you while I'm doing this test on camera. And you don't have to worry about wasting the paint because these little guys are super concentrated. And you know, while I wouldn't say they're most expensive fluid acrylics out there, you're still paying for all that concentrated color. So I'm just gonna wipe my paper plate out. One thing you can use is wax paper, which is dirt cheap. Just tape down a little piece of wax paper. You can even tape it into a plate like this and then remove the wax paper and not have to worry about going through a paper plate every single time, which is what I'm trying to avoid. Okay, so I'm looking for a deep red for my poppy. So let's get some of this quinacridine red out. Which that's a really nice poppy red. But what if I want to go from a red to a slightly deeper red? One more night, one more time, we know that this is dioxazine violet. This little cap sure stays on nice and tight. I'll put a drop of... See, I'm just one little itty bitty tiny drop so I can test this. That's why I like these little things where one little tiny drop off of my black and I will use a smaller bottle so you can see the difference. See, that's one drop out of my bottle. So it really saves the paint, especially if I'm going to do some color mixing in my tubes that might take only one drop of dioxazine, some violet, so I can make a pale violet. Of course, now that I've said that, I probably need to show you guys how to do that just for the fun of it. But I still am testing what am I going to do for the deepest red on my poppy. Okay? A pa I do have a paper towel here that I'm wiping with. You just can't see it on camera. So, I don't really like how it ran. It ran too much when I wet it down. So I'm going to go back to just doing it on the dry cardstock. I will get my brush nice and moist with a little bit of water. So maybe that'll help. Now I'm going to mix up some of this quinacridine red. Just get just the tip of that diazazine violet. Wow, that's a nice deep red. Now that's a red. That's a deep red. It's not pink. Let's see what the regular diazazine looks like just straight on here next to it. Now there's still a little bit of that other color on my brush. But I kind of think that's interesting how they blend together. So let's see what happens if I try it with the black which is typically how you'll make a shade color a bit. I know from making color for a living that I like what blue and purple do to make a more natural, deeper tone. So here's just a little tip of black on my brush. I'm gonna pick up some of this quinacridine red and mix it. Looks fairly similar. Similar. I'll bet you after it dries, it may have a different look. But either one would work for the darker part of the poppy, right? And then once again, here's what the regular quinacridine red looks like with that little bit of black left on my brush. 
and how they blend together. So I don't know, I kind of like the violet, but that's just me. Um, I can deepen this one more time. It's a lot of black, Les. Let's see if I can get a really, really, really deep black and run it blackish red and run it right down the center. And that might be the red that I use in my crevices. That red that I got right down the middle. So I want to start this video off by showing you a tiny bit of color mixing. You can do this with your oranges. You can do this with the red. This particular, these poppies are going to have yellow, orange, and red. And I'm going to be blending them into one another. But I really want to see what would happen if I wanted a, a darker red. And I do like what this black is doing. It's real rich and it will pop against this other red that we've got going here. We put them side by side. Those are nice colors next to each other. Okay, so uh, let's get started on the video. I'm going to clean up my table, get all my colors out. Um, I'm going to also be experimenting with a little bit of the autumn moon. I can't help myself. Got to put a little bling in my piece. So I'll probably be mixing some autumn moon with the pyro orange for the orange just to add a little bit of something something to my poppies but i promise you guys each one of these videos that i'm using the vivid intense i'm going to try to do a quick little mixing lesson in each one of them but think about it you could take this ultramarine blue and a couple drops away and make a beautiful blue beautiful pale blue and if you can get just the tiniest drop of diazosine violet, like out of these little vials, you could probably make a periwinkle because the drop out of this thing is small enough, right? So I, I want you to think about how to be creative with this. You've got 10 colors in this set, but you could probably make 20 or 30 out of them by using your black and white to make a tint or to make a shade. Okay, I'll get back with you with the poppy and we'll get started on the poppy. To start off, I wanted to see I put some Hansa yellow on my plate, just pure. A little bit of the pyro orange. And here is some of the Autumn Moon Harvest Moon color, which is an incredibly beautiful orange. And I'm going to mix up one drop whatever what drop my bottle gives me anyway to add this in when I'm doing it so I have an option if you can see that shimmer in there god it's gorgeous but remember these are acrylics you got to work in small little bits because they will dry up so I'll be mixing more of this as I'm going but I want to see the mix of the pyro orange with the Harvest Moon. There's just a couple drops of water in here to get it to activate. But let's get to some music. I'm going to take the tips and do them yellow. Tips of the edges of the flower will be yellow. Then we're going to go into an orange, then we're going to go to a red, and then we're going to go to the deepest red. Okay? So kick back and enjoy as you watch me paint my peaceful poppies. I begin painting all of my poppies by using Hansa Yellow on the edge of the leaves, Pyro Orange and Pyro Orange mixed with Harvest Moon, that really bright primary element pigment, some Quinacridine Red, and that really deep color is that Quinacridine Red mixed with black. And I just went through all the petals, did all of them the same color combination, sit back and relax and enjoy the music while you watch me paint them.
In a small lid, I put some of the Hansa yellow and the yellow green. Then I painted the highlight portion of the poppy centers, all with this bright light green. Then I mixed some titanium white with diazosine violet to create a lighter shade of purple and highlighted the highlights of those centers with a lighter purple. Next, I mixed some of the fallow green with the yellow green and just started laying down some green stems and the top of the poppy bud. Thank you. 
Then I added some darker green to the edges of the stem. Then I took some of my red and that orange that was mixed with the Harvest Moon and put some dark red and bright orange on the poppy bud. So here's our piece dried the next day and now my challenge is, is what do I fill in my background with? If you can see there's some light texture in there, what I did is I just took some paste and tapped my knife up and down just to create light texture all along the way. And I don't think until I varnish, maybe when I tilt it you can see hold this right here for you guys. You see how it looks like the harvest moon's giving you a little sparkle there? That's that harvest moon orange, bright orange, mixed with that pyrrole orange. I think once I varnish it, and this kind of piece I probably varnish, I don't know, my instinct is always to resin everything that I think is going to shimmer, but it's glimmery enough to where I think if I varnish it'll be fine. So. Now the challenge is, what do I do my background with? So, I'm gonna pour a little tiny bit of this sea monster out. I don't know, I, there's a lot brighter ones, but the softness of this is kind of attracting me. Maybe that test I did with the flow trawl. And then this is that ginger snap. It's an antique gold. It's gorgeous, actually. It's a very beautiful antique gold. Let's do something with this first. I think I'm going to start with the gold. Now, this is a special kind of dauber brush. The bristles are different lengths. The outside is shorter, the inside's longer. It's very soft. You can get all kinds of horsehair brushes, any kind of fat brush that you can pick up a little color. and then daub up and down. So that this is going to pick up some of that yellow and I don't want to get too yellow. So that's actually where I'm going to put it down first. It will add a little antiquing to the background before I put this blue on top. Again, I'm picking up the color and then tapping it on the plate, making sure that my brush doesn't have too much on it so I can carefully apply also get a chance to get a little sparkle in my piece because the majority of these poppies is the fluid acrylic, the vivid intense, which of course is just flat. We know we have that harvest food in there. Now see down here I kind of wish I had the sponge because I don't like how these look like round marks. So I'm going to pick up the sponge get me something more random in here and take out what looks like just round dots. Still not picking up that much color, probably because it's a brand new sponge. But a sea sponge is going to be more random. 
Okay, so we kind of antiqued that with a... Whew, didn't plan on going that yellow, but you know, it's down now. Let's, let's go with what we've got at this point. I can always spritz and mop if I feel like something's a little bit too much of one color at this point. So let's take some of this sea monster. Do the same thing. Well, try not to make green. Maybe I should have gone the other way around, put my turquoise on the bottom and the gold on top. We'll see. Well, it's looking a little bit... I think I'm going to spread this out and not put so much of this on and come back in with that vivid intent. dandy paper towels out. What happens if I spritz this? Remember the Vivid Intense is already dry. It's not going to reactivate when I do this. So it will soften my colors. Oh, and the beautiful thing about the texture back there, it's going to pick up some of this. And my Poppies aren't going to be at all affected by me doing this, kind of moving this around with that towel, because that's a little bit, looks like too many actual daubs. But you know me, I had to have a little bit of bling bling, a little bit of bling bling. Everything's got to have a little sparkle. I'm getting more brave with that water. Soften that up a bit. I'm going to dry this with my blow dryer. Give me a second. When you're working with watercolors and I've been trying to kind of apply some of those techniques with these last two pieces that I did you lay down color spritz it and then mop it up when you're just doing your background mop it up with a paper towel and it gives a real random look so I don't know, that's not too bad. A little gold for my taste, since there's so much yellow in here. Yeah, I need to get those colors back in the bottle, actually. I'm gonna do it right now. You've seen it here first. Don't wanna waste my paint. I'm gonna pick up the rest of that, put it back in the bottle. Same thing with this sea monster. By the way, I did wipe off my brush before I picked up this second color. Mostly wiped off. Okay. So that way we're not wasting anything. And then kind of a long brush. I want something wider. Normally this little stipply brush would be used for brushing on dry powders. And this feels a little bit too small, but we can try. So I'm just gonna 
pour some of this cobalt teal right in the on top of where the sea monster was. I'm going to put a little water in here to spritz it so it's nice and loose. And I'm going to work in small sections. I think I'm going to start at this end here first. Spritz this also with water. I kind of just brush the color on. Ooh, and then mop it off. I'm going to bring some of that back. Oh, I'm loving what the texture is doing. I don't know if you could see that. Remember, this is going to have a little Van Dyke brown on it, but I like that I'm bringing back that teal a little bit. This was a little bit too gold. So I like where I'm going. I'm wetting it, and I'm wetting it. So I've wet the paint. I've also wet the board, my wooden board here. And then I'm just going to blot up the excess. So I'm just leaving a little bit. Ooh, I'm liking though how that gold is picking up the texture there. That's kind of interesting. clean my brush and get it right there in those crevices so there's just a little hint of that teal green background staining my board this is just a clean brush and I'm just kind of moving around what I mopped off I'm liking this. I'm liking that a lot. Very soft. The gold's a little bit too, like, you know, intentional, like blobs of gold. But maybe that Van Dyke Brown will soften it up. Let's move up here because I'm going to complete this one side. Spritz this a little bit wet. Now this time I'm going to make sure I get into my grooves. Oh, I don't know if you can see this. I am I'm loving what's happening right here with this texture. Can you see this texture? That texture paste is picking it up. And maybe I don't need to mop off so much. I'm kind of liking that teal background with that. And I do need to get in here. It's too white. I get into all these little crevices. That's not a bad background. Okay, I'm getting into the groove here. I'm glad I started at the other end. So for the time I get to the top, where my real pretty. Now this is still wet. It's already wet. This. two tones are working. I probably could have done without the sea monster even though you know you do deserve to see what I attempted what my experiment was but I do like what that uh, ginger snap looks like on top down first and there'll be just a little bit of sparkle. Let's turn this around. There's some poppies in your face. Woo! I'm going to start at this other end here. 
Yeah, so I like the feel of what the texture paste does. It makes it look looks kind of aged. There's a little pencil mark we need to cover up. I was trying to draw on my poppy. I mean my poppy bud. Okay, so let's wet this little section down. I remember my few drops of fluid acrylic of the Intense is also moistened, it's not pure. So it's gonna run. I'm making sure it's getting into the little sections first because that's where I missed on that other side I did the outside and then had to come back and do the inside now I'm doing the inside right up against where the poppies are and then I can spread the color out and also because of it because the prism pour is already dry it's also kind of resisting the and I'm using the same paper towel I'm just kind of Lighting it so it has a slight antique feel to it. I feel like I've taken too much off. I can go back in and adjust it. So it looks like it feels like I've got that right amount of blue in there. I'm kind of digging this. Okay. This was not planned. <laughs> Until I did that test with those two colors for Saskia, she really wanted to know if I could make a cell activator. Here's another pencil mark. I didn't even realize I'm going to have to try to cover up. Put a little bit more pure blue in there. I know the brown will help once we antique this thing with the brown. Get it right up against my poppy. So it goes down into those grooves. Yeah, I am loving this texture. What that texture is doing, how it's behaving. Again, I'm still using the same paper towel. I'm just kind of mopping it up so it looks real random. I just can't resist adding a little bit of bling bling. <laughs> After all, everything we make has shimmered except these vivid intents. See the very, 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 very tall. Here we go. I want you to see that close up so you can see this texture here. Is that that ginger snap really grabbed that texture? And just a spritz of water. Beginning. It's not horrible. I feel like there's too much round marks still here. So I think once this is dry, and let's do that, shall we?
I still have some of that on my brush. I should have washed this off already, but let's get our plate. I'm gonna add just a dab more of this gold on because these look like big round blobs. I want it to look more like a, a random texture. to try brushing it back and forth. There we go. And then the texture will pick this up. Just try to lift my brush real light. Oh, that's much better than having those round blobs. Kind of do it along here to get some highlights. And now again, I'm brushing really lightly, just trying to get the texture on the top to pick this up. And then, of course, I know I'm going to be adding this brown, which is going to tone down the yellow of that gold, but that looks so much better there without those round blobs from tamping it. Oh, yeah. I'm much happier with that. Okay, so next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make a brown. People's getting messier and messier here. So I'd like to make it in my little dispenser for you, but still I have to test this, you know, how much a brown to how much orange. So let's zoom up on my My little cup here okay now my instinct is saying three parts this pyro orange to one part of the blue we'll see so I'm gonna go with one two three drops same size. Ooh, that gave me a little itty bitty drop. That was a happy accident. Typically those drops aren't coming out like that. Yeah, but that little, that's still real orangey. It looks like almost quinacridone cold. So that's more blue. And I don't think this little stick is going to be able to get in there. I'm going to have to use a brush. bit too orange. Let's see what this looks like on a piece of cardstock. It's still very much an orangey brown. Pyro orange is really strong. So let's add another drop of blue to it. Typically brown is made with yellow, red, and blue. And since pyro orange is made out of yellow and red, that's not bad. So let's make up a little more of it. Let's go again. I'm gonna go one, two, three, four. And this time I'm only gonna go Two more of that color. I want a little more brown. Oh, that's almost the same. Oh. 
Really, I want to get to almost a sepia that's a little bit too warm of a... That's not bad. I don't know if I'm going to take... I'm going to take a risk here. I have one of these vials with some black and one of these vials with dioxazine violet. Now, because this has red in it and blue in it, the violet may be too dark, but because this little thing only puts the tiniest drop out, right? Remember, these are little bitty drops like we used in the beginning. I can get one little micro drop in there if I can get it to squeeze. Okay, so it's giving me a hard time. There's a little pin you're supposed to put in there and I, I'm waiting for these spectacles to come that I can see. Let's see if my black works because I have the pin in the black. But again, just a drop of black. There we go, one drop of black. I don't know if you can see that in there. Let's see what one drop of black does. That should work. Okay, so I don't need much. This is quite a bit in here, especially since I'm going to do it as a wash. If I have to make more, I can make more. These are pretty much dry. Now I'm gonna do my best to try to avoid the green. I really like what that green's doing, but it is what it is. And because, again, these are already completely dry and vivid and tense are in acrylic, I can get away with moistening this first. What happens is any place where you may have missed the paint, I know it looks like I'm ruining it right now. I promise you I'm not. It'll go up down into those cracks. I know, I'm ruining it right on, oh, you know, you see me do this, sorry. I'm ruining it right on camera for you. It's still too warm of a brown in my opinion. Really should have more black in it. This is more of a warm Van Dyke and I was looking for like a sepia brown. Kind of bleed out into my background a little bit as promised. Antique the whole thing. Now you can't do a lot of big sections. You got to do a small section at a time. And this is actually probably pretty big. So let's get our paper towels. Get a brand new one. Mop up the poppy. It really seems to push the texture forward. Just kind of the point of this. Brings out the texture of the poppy. And it softens how bright that color is. I continued painting the rest of the poppies by adding the brown to the poppies, add a little brown to the background, spritzing it with water, mopping up the excess. Adding the brown, spritzing the water, and mopping up the excess. So here we are. Let's see if we can't zoom in so you can see each section. 
Like I said, I'm going to varnish it, but you can still see the shimmer here in these petals, which is kind of cool. Where the primer elements isn't going to let go of that shimmer. The prism pour gold is very subtle in the background, which is what I wanted. Okay, here's that center one. Here's the bottom one. Yeah, I'm loving that background. I'm going to do that background again. It makes it look like a very old piece. See how much I can zoom out because it's at the really at a, the wrong long angle to try to get the whole thing. I'm going to need to show it to you this way, even though I will get a good shot of this so you can see what it would look like framed on the wall. All in all, I'm, I'm really shocked, surprised, pleased, and feeling a little brave that I put on that sea monster, then the ginger snap, then the uh, uh, cobalt teal, and then more of that ginger snap, and then that custom, that's more of a Van Dyke brown, that warm brown that I got to age this. I'd really love to get this whole shot long to you, but it's just too long to get in the camera. So one more time, this is what it looks like. I'm really, really pleased with this piece. Can't wait to do another one. And like I said, the final shot, I'll have varnished this so we'll get a little bit more glow out of the petals where the harvest moon was used. I've hoped you enjoyed this video. It was really a pleasure making this for you. If you've enjoyed it, I hope you'll consider to like, subscribe, and share with your friends. And remember, life is art. Live yours in color.